Hi brothers and sisters, so we come together to celebrate this great day within the liturgy of the church. Today Holy Mother Church gives us immediately after Pentecost the celebration of the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. Now as we begin, allow me to greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And that as a greeting should be quite familiar to most of us because it's something that we participate in, that we receive at the beginning of each liturgical celebration, at the beginning of each Mass. When the priest greets, and here we see this coming directly from Scripture, from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, which forms our second reading for this weekend's liturgy. Holy Mother Church has given us this greeting, this statement coming directly from Paul's lips, his words to the Corinthians, wherein Paul does something quite important for us as Christians. Paul, by this greeting, identifies the three divine persons in the Holy Trinity whom we celebrate today. Let's look at that greeting again. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Person number one. He identifies the second person of the Trinity. The love of God. Paul identifies now the first person of the Trinity, the Father. And the fellowship or communion, the word rather which we have been using most recently, of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Spirit, is identified. And Paul in doing that really does something special. He is calling on all of divine revelation up until that point to identify, perhaps for the first time, that expression which gives effect to who God has shown himself to be. It is by no accident that we celebrate this solemnity immediately after Pentecost, because at Pentecost, we, if we remember correctly, we recognize that God has been revealed. We're walking on that journey from incarnation to passion to death to resurrection to Pentecost. We see Father Creator. We see the Son who has been sent on a mission. And we see Jesus going, telling us that he is sending an advocate for us. That advocate who is the sanctifier and that is what Paul has done with that greeting he identifies he pulls it into one space for the first time showing us that even though that word Trinity isn't actually mentioned that God can clearly be seen as revealing God's self in these three persons one God but three persons now, before we go into the intricacies of that, how that happens, let us look some more at what Paul is saying to us with this greeting. Now, fellowship used in this particular par paragraph, or communion, which some of us may be more accustomed to, is a word that in its Greek form, koinonia, Paul uses. Koinonia comes from the Greek koinos, which means common. So in using common, Paul is saying to us that when a person is in fellowship or in communion, in koinonia with someone else, it means that we have something in common. And in this case, as Christians, as Catholics, having received the Holy Spirit in our baptism, the Spirit descending upon us in Pentecost, which we just celebrated, we know that what we have in common is the Holy Spirit. So the koinonia, the communion of the Holy Spirit is the fellowship that the saints, that Christians possess with one another through the common gift of the Holy Spirit that they've all received in baptism, that we received at Pentecost. It is the bond that unites those who are members 
of the mystical body of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. What a gift and what a grace. As we listen to Paul, we truly ought to recognize that when we begin each Mass, each celebration of the Eucharist, when we invoke the Trinity in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, it is saying something about our lives, saying something about what we understand, saying something about what we believe. The Catechism of the Catholic Church speaks something specifically to us about this. It speaks in paragraph 234 to the fact that the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of the Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God himself. Let's have a look at that. The mystery of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. The church is teaching us that that central mystery is not resurrection or Eucharist or anything else which is so important to our faith but that Trinity that God whom we serve and whom we love is the central mystery of our faith it is teaching us that there is a hierarchy of truths in our faiths and it is this Holy Spirit who descended upon us in Pentecost, who we receive in our baptism, who helps to enlighten us so that we may be able to grasp just a little as to what God is saying to us about God's self. You know, the Catechism goes on further to say that the ultimate end of the whole divine economy is the entry of God's creatures into the perfect unity of the Blessed Trinity. I repeat that. Paragraph 260 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that the ultimate end of the whole divine economy is the entry of God's creatures into the perfect unity of the Blessed Trinity. I take you back to the sign of the cross. When we pray, when we bless ourselves on each occasion, at the beginning of Mass, when we pass a church, when we invoke the Holy Trinity over ourselves, it is not merely the act of blessing ourselves, but it is about understanding that our ultimate end is to be united with God as it were to become part of God to enter into the life of the divine trinity this is why God has intended us to be so that as we live and as we give praise and glory to him that we would eventually enter into the life and the love of the father the son the Holy Spirit for all eternity. Having looked at that desire of God for us to enter into His life and love, we can perhaps now understand why the celebration of this solemnity comes immediately on the completion of the revelation of the three divine persons in the history of salvation. That is, comes immediately after Pentecost. It comes because the central doctrine which holds a belief in one God but three divine persons, Father, Son and Spirit, is meant to direct our lives and to direct the way that we live within the Trinity, this blessed Trinity. We can identify three qualities as it were. Or rather to say another way, we can identify in looking at how God reveals God's self that there is equality, unity, and distinction 
within that Godhead, within whom God shows himself to be. Equality that is not sameness, but equal stature of each person within God. There is unity, a unity of common substance, being nature and essence. There is, however, a distinction. Each person is individual. And we can see that perhaps most easily and most clearly because of relationship that exists. If we take ourselves back to sacred scripture, we can clearly identify Father, a creator. We can identify, if we go to John's gospel, a father in the prologue who sends his son. If we look at the readings taking us to Pentecost, we can see Jesus talking about leaving and going to his father so that the advocate will come. Identify the, not just the three persons, but how they work in relationship with each other. Jesus continues to call and to refer to God the Father as Father. And that relationship is expressed in terms of love. For Jason Boatson, one of the priests in our archdiocese who has spent much time studying and reflecting on the Trinity, taught us that when we look at Trinity, we see love. We see God's essence. And this wasn't just what he made up, but this is what the history and tradition of the church has shown. This is what people like Richard of St. Victor have shown. This is what the Catechism of the Catholic Church shows. This is what sacred scripture shows. For in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, it states that God is love. Now if God is love, then love is the very substance, being nature and essence of God. And if God shows and reveals relationship through three divine persons within God's self, then that relationship must be one of love. That says to us, going back to what the Catechism says, Trinity being central mystery of our faith and that our ultimate end is to enter into the life and love of God of the Trinity says to us that the ultimate end, the ultimate expression of our Christianity is to live as the Trinity lives. We are created in the image of the Trinity. As human beings, we realize the fullness of our personhood to the degree to which we are able to exist in communion, to exist in a communion of love with one another. I repeat, we are created in the image of the Trinity. Human beings, as what we are, we realize the fullness of our personhood to the degree to which we are able to exist in communion with each other, a communion of love. And that has specific meaning in this time, particularly. In this time, we are looking at great social upheaval and unrest. We can look at what is going on in our own country, what is going on in the United States of America, in much of the Western world. Much of it because we have failed to look at who we are created in the image of the Trinity and that we are called to exist in a communion of love. A communion of love with one another. A communion of love with our family. A communion of love with our community, those with whom we work, those with whom we fellowship, those with whom we spend our time with. And to understand that communion in that tripartite light of the Trinity, of unity, equality, and distinction is to recognize that we are all united as human beings, common substance. That we are all equal, equal dignity of equal stature as human beings, yet we are all distinct, all specially gifted, 
blessed by God. Our distinction is not something that we ought to push aside. Rather, in the light of the Trinity, our distinction is something that brings us into the fullness of love. And that, sisters and brothers, is perhaps one of the greatest gifts that God has given to us today. As we celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, let us, as Father Jason likes to say, recognize that the Trinity is a communion of love and that we ourselves are called to live in the example of that Trinity. Let us recognize that we are to fight for that community, to fight for that communion, to fight for koinonia, that expression of our sameness or that common thing we share who happens to be that Holy Spirit who holds us together, a gift that we received again at Pentecost. May God bless you all and may you continue to guide us into this communion of love. Amen.